It's time to finally start working on the cabinets. If this is the first video that you're watching, jump back a little while ago, we started the electrical project on the garage. We wanted to get it all wired up. And this project, the cabinets, was kind of the impetus for this. I mean, it needed to be done anyway, but the fact that we're gonna be running a bunch of power tools in here, we need some dust collection and stuff like that, kind of got us motivated to get the garage electrical done. That took us a couple of weeks total to get done and we did pass that inspection and the garage electricals all, well, pretty much done. We still have a few things to do, but that's not the point of this video. Then jump back a couple videos and catch up on this shopsmith. So we got this used as part of an estate sale and we, it's been in storage for a couple of years. We were super excited when we found it and it was a little bit scary bringing it home. We never really tested it and we don't really have any experience with shopsmiths. So it was like, we don't really know what's gonna happen. So I've spent the last two days going through this unit, actually way more than that, and got everything calibrated and made sure everything fits and works. We did find a couple of issues. I need to get some parts ordered to bring a couple of the tools into working, good working order. Otherwise, this thing is basically ready to start working on the cabinet project and uh, we're just gonna figure out how hard it is to work with. One of the reasons that we're working on this project now instead of working on other things like the electrical upstairs and siding, etc., is because I'm so invested in this project. Alyssa and I spent a lot of time talking about just little projects that we could do that would be immediate life upgrades, and this is one of those. Um, we did a design video. We talked about kind of the, the process we went through in designing these cabinets. If you haven't seen that video, jump back. It's kind Kind of dry because well I don't know how to show people how we design stuff so I did the best I could we use this software which is SketchUp it is a free software and we basically worked with the dimensions that were that we have for cabinetry we thought about functions that we need so this is going to be a sink base here and then we've got a drawer base on either side and a set of uppers we have a washer and dryer that's going here and this set of cabinets is going to be a laundry area, although right now it's pretty much our primary cooking and um, kind of a kitchenette type area. So this is where we started. I did draw out two completely different sets of cabinets. Let me see if I have the other one here. Here it is. So this is a very similar set of cabinets, but the primary difference is this is what's called a Euro style. In this set of cabinets, the box is actually exposed when you open the door. So if we remove the face frame and the doors, actually there is no face frame, that's the big difference. So if we put this door on here, or the drawer face, this edge is actually exposed when you open the door. It's called a Euro style or a full access cabinet or a panel cabinet, lots of terms for it. Anyway, we weren't sure. We were concerned about the compromise between buildability and the ultimate end product. So I ended up drawing out two completely different sets of cabinets. That's the first one. And then this is the one that we're actually gonna to try to build. The primary difference being these are a framed cabinet so there's actually a face frame that we're going to build that will hide the edges of the boxes and provides a more finished look to the outside of the cabinet. This will all be uh, like some sort of, of finished wood, hardwood. I don't know exactly what we're gonna use for that just yet. So after getting the design basically polished, I have worked 
endlessly, tirelessly to try to work through every minute detail. We are not cabinet makers. And so this project is not about saving time. It's about learning to build our cabinets. I do think we are gonna save quite a bit of money because while well, we're trading our time for the labor cost, but ultimately we wanna build the cabinets in every other part of our house too. The upstairs area, the bathroom, the kitchen, etc. And so this is kind of a project where we're gonna work through some of those bugs and try to figure this stuff out. So once the design was complete, uh, we went ahead and purchased materials, and then we needed a really efficient way to cut out the panels that we're gonna be using to build the box and the drawers. I found this website just through a Google search, and I actually shared this on social media, and several of you guys out there had different tools that you use. I just grabbed the first one that seemed like it did a decent job. And the job of this software is actually to maximize your sheet goods or your material. So what you do is you tell it what kind of material you have and the dimensions of those materials. Then you tell it what cuts you need and then it gives you a layout if you were to, to cut these the most efficient way. If you wanna take this to another level, you can actually optimize for grain direction. So for example, if you want the grain to go this way or that way or whatever. So this uh, is the cutout sheet for our half inch plywood. So this is our drawers and that's all the pieces parts and there's some uh, cabinet backs in here too. Those are all the parts that we need to build the drawers for this set of cabinets. I've had cabinet maker friends in the past and I know they had a system for all this stuff because they're super efficient. We don't have any of that. So we're kind of we're kind of putting things together that I know of, but no, I don't have a great way of kind of working through this workflow. Really quick, I did want to share one thing, just a lesson that we learned the hard way, I guess. I bought enough hardware to build one cabinet, basically one set of drawer slides, I think, and a, a two sets of hinges. So we could build a, a pair of doors and one drawer. And my thinking there was to kind of test this stuff out. And we ended up purchasing this stuff online and we tried to go the budget route. We went with a website whose prices were more favorable and I ordered this stuff a week ago. I just got an email from them saying that it's back ordered for another three weeks. We ended up spending a bunch more, not for shipping, but just to buy from a website that had the parts in stock. So I just wanted to share that with you in case you have some inclination to go the cheap route. You might want to think about what your time is worth. So basically where we're at right now is we have all of our materials. These are the sheets that we're going to be using to make the boxes. I purchased three quarter finished grade plywood and this has a UV finish on one side. So the unfinished side will probably be the outside of the box. There's a couple pieces in the cabinets that we're going to have to finish both sides because it's visible below and then there's a shelf above. So we'll have to do some work there. And then this is half inch finished grade plywood and it is unfinished. So when it comes to the drawers, we're going to have to figure something out to make the, the drawers, you know, cleanable and durable. I did a layout for all of our half inch plywood and for our three quarter inch plywood. And so now what I want to achieve today is I want to, I want to get all these cuts made. I'm, I'm a little scared to just jump straight into cutting, but part of the reason that we have spent so much time designing in software is because we should be able to lay it all out, cut it all out, and it should fit. I think there's always a temptation to shortcut the planning process and we are 100% guilty of doing that. And I think it's tempting to, to want to get straight to building. We feel like with the house, as we were building the house, we had engineers who were working with us on the house plans. And quite frankly, we could build faster than they could engineer. And so we were right on the edge of the engineering of our house. Uh, as we were building it. And that's not a good feeling because there's so many things that are interrelated. You don't really want to get something done only to realize later that you forgot to add something in. We didn't have that happen, although having built the house, now we could tell you there's some things that we would do differently. I tested this theory of designing everything in a software that I can do and building it with our man basket and it worked. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's gonna work twice, but I drew it out to the nth detail in a software. I created a cut list and then I went for it and it actually worked. If you haven't seen that video, it's a ton of fun. Um, it was pretty, pretty uh, courageous to just go for it and, and it worked. So we're kind of trying to test that theory with the cabinets. We're, we're designing to the point of 
ad nauseum, like where you're completely over planning. And hopefully when we start making the cuts, everything will just fit together. And I guess if it doesn't, it's probably just a data entry error or there actually was a flaw in our design. Something that I had to consider in my cabinet design was my material. I was talking to a friend the other day who works in commercial cabinetry and I said, do you guys generate a lot of waste? And the answer is yes. We've kind of learned this through the house build that you can either design around something that you want or you can design around your materials, but you can't always do both. So for example, our lower cabinets are actually going to be 23 and 7 eighths of an inch deep. The reason for that is that this saw blade is 1 eighth of an inch thick and a sheet of plywood is 48 inches wide. So in order to be efficient with the material, we want to get two 23 and 7 8 inch pieces, we're gonna have to take out the width of that saw kerf out of the middle. So they're just not gonna be 24 inches. We want a 24 inch deep cabinet, but that's not how we're going to achieve that. So I think what we're trying to communicate is think about whether you're hard and fast on your design or you're willing to compromise a little bit to make a good use of the materials that you have. Something I've noticed is that on melamine or MDF, they tend to make the panels slightly oversized. For example, they're 49 inches instead of 48, and they're 97 inches instead of 96. And that must be to account for the saw curves so that you can get full depth cabinets. I gave melamine and MDF a look, but I was not, ah, there's something about that material. I love it when it's put together and because it's so cleanable, and it's easy to maintain. But in my opinion, building with it sucks. If you put a screw too close to the edge, boom, it blows out. Or if you, if you barely set a panel down wrong, it'll shatter the edge. Or sometimes when you're cutting it on the saw, the melamine portion will just shatter or splinter or whatever. So the point is, from a buildability perspective, I feel like melamine sucks. Plywood is far superior, uh, but we're gonna to have to do something to make sure that the plywood has the same cleanability and serviceability that the melamine offers. To further simplify the planning process, I've basically built a cut sheet for each cabinet. And then I put the material for each and then the quantity of each. And I feel like this, this process made building these cut sheets much easier because I can just sort my cut sheet by the material and then put in all my cuts. But then I can also create this document so that if I only want to work on my 24 inch base cabinet, I can just see what pieces I need. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself on the cabinet design. I wanted to go over some of this stuff because I think it's relevant to today, which hopefully we're just going to work on a whole bunch of cutting on the table saw. But there's obviously a tremendous amount of back work that got us to this point. And I think just something I want to communicate, I think, is a lot of people out there don't love the planning phase of building. They like building. Everybody likes to watch a house be built, but not too many people like to watch a house be planned. And everybody assumes that a house that's built fast must have just been easy as heck to plan. And I think we're speaking to that, that the more planning you do, the easier and more enjoyable the building process is. If you shortcut the planning process, process you've probably already been there if you're if you're if I'm speaking to you you probably know what I'm talking about you start changing and amending and adjusting and adapting and pretty soon whatever you end up with looks nothing like what you set out to build we had that experience recently with a firewood pallet that sucked I can't can't wait to redesign that project and build it the way it should have been the first time one of the challenges with these sheet layout systems is that they don't really think about how hard it is to cut they they're purely looking at efficiency maybe there is one out there that is more complicated than this but you can kind of see that they stick a bunch of these little pieces at the end that's efficient but maybe not the easiest thing to cut so for example we can't just cut straight all the way down through here because we'll run into those two pieces. Although it does look like if we move those pieces down, that might work. So this software doesn't think about that. It just lays out for optimization. So I think if we move those pieces down, we should actually be able to rip this, this full length, which would be great. And then we should be able to rip full length here. So with one, two cuts, we can have this panel in thirds, and then we simply need to cross cut to, to finish out all those cuts. Same thing here. 
we should be able to cut straight down through here except for we run into that piece. So now we need to cut down through here. Well, that sucks because they're gonna run into that piece. So it looks like if we cut this bottom part off, we'll have all this stuff. Then if we cut this guy off, then we can cut down through here. So my point is that uh, these are great for efficiency, but you're still gonna have to use your coconut to figure out how in the world to cut these efficiently. <laughs> So the plan is to do the 23 and 7 eighths cuts first. That's how the saw is set up right now. Okay. So we're gonna have six pieces when we're all done and then I'll go back and we'll have to figure out the setup on cool. this panel. It's gonna be confusing. Yeah, it'd be a good idea to do an X when they're cutting. Yeah, I thought about drawing a line in here for like the cuts so it's more obvious where to cut, but these are pretty straightforward. Um, so what I'm thinking is I'll have you on this side out feed and as this piece comes out, support that with your left hand. And then as I finish the cut, you and I will work together to move this right piece to the sawhorses. Once that's down, we'll, I'll help you move this left piece to the sawhorses. Um, I have feather boards installed. So what are, these are gonna do is they're gonna push the wood down onto the table to help awesome. push it down. So it's, yep. not, it's less likely to tilt up like mm -hmm. this as long as we keep it against the fence. Hopefully with the fence and, and the feather boards and everything, there's not gonna be nearly as much work as you're used to doing on the Craftsman. Let's try one panel and we'll see what happens. It's already marked. Yep, A1. Okay. And then this is A2 and 3. You want to keep going? Yep. Okay. Yeah, except it's doing a horrible job. Yeah, that's probably pretty much 100% of the sawdust, actually, that we just produced. Uh, so, not really sure yeah. why it's sucking so bad. <laughs> Stuff has one job. That's what drives me nuts, is that it's built for one purpose, and it doesn't do that very well. That went pretty good, huh? I think so, yeah. I think having that outfeed table went pretty good, yep. and the infeed table. I kind of just made this up, like, thinking of how to use the bars and the tables and all that stuff. Yeah, it works. I think it cut clean. It was fairly easy to do. Need a lot of room. I like that it's a little higher. The other table saw is kind of down here. True, good point. I never thought about that. I was thinking the high was a bad thing, but now that you mention it, it was actually pretty comfortable because yeah, yeah, the other one's cool. like down here at like knee height. All right, so those are all ripped in half. So now I just need to reset the saw to 11 and 7 eighths, and then we can rip the last full panel, and then we could rip one of those in half-ish. And then I think from there, I mean, I think I can kind of handle it on my own. So let me get this reworked and then we'll do it again.
this is more like a normal table saw. Yep. I see why they offer classes on this. Um, yeah. Like seminars. Right. <laughs> like bring your wife, get a hotel. Yeah, we're gonna exactly. We're going to be here a while. So get a pool, make sure it's got breakfast. All right, so we're running Bravo through three times at 11 and 7 eighths, and then there'll be a piece of scrap, and then we're going to unbury Alpha two and three, and then we'll run those two through. Turn on the noise maker. Make noise. Go. Eleven and seven eighths. Eleven and seven eighths. see if the uh, shop vac does a better job of dust collection. I think the answer is nominally. Really? <laughs> it's better, but not by a mile. So I think the issue here is not that the dust collection system doesn't work. It's like the blade guard thing in Majigger doesn't work. So. so for table sawing, we're in pretty bad shape. I mean, that's pretty much all the shavings. I'm really confused why it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't work. <sighs> Cool, so I think that's all the heavy ripping. Sweet. We got through it. It's good to have your help. I know. <laughs> I haven't been around table saw in a very long time. A very long time. <laughs> cool, thanks for the help. You're welcome. I'll take it from here, I think. Sounds good. All right, the hard part is gonna be not getting lost. We have severely modified this layout. So I guess in the end, I'm not sure that this thing saved us a ton of time. So I probably should just draw a line like that. So those are moved to Delta, that's moved to Charlie. What did we move? Oh, this one moved to Bravo, and this one moved to Bravo. So then this moved to Charlie, number six. It's 22 and a half inches. And actually this one's 18, 18, and 16. And I'm gonna put from, from Bravo, from Bravo. This one's from, Bravo. This is two Bravo, two Bravo. All right, so now the big challenge is cross cutting. Of course, we can't cross cut on the miter chop saw. Uh, our panels are too wide. Well, the 12 inch stuff we could probably do. I don't know, that's a good question. But for the bigger stuff, we have a cross cut sled. And this is one of those accessories that the previous owner had. So what that allows us to do is put a fairly wide piece on there and then engage the miter track and we can actually slide the panel through the saw controllably at a 90 degree angle without the fence. So the fence is gonna have to come off because for example, we have a couple pieces that are 45 inches and it's like about 48 inches to this post. So without the fence there, we're, we're gonna be still squeezing it tight. So I guess let's get the saw set up to cross cut and then we'll make our first cut and see what happens. So the track on is goes on this side, so we're actually cutting on this side of the, the blade. I feel like the sled probably will start in the track just fine, and then what we need is support on that side when we're all done with the cut so that I don't have to reach over the saw. Like that, maybe. This will support the piece. So where I need support is actually over here, less than I need support over there, cause that's gonna, the piece is gonna stay on the sled. After fussing a bunch 
that the crosscut sled just won't work great for these two foot wide pieces. The maximum reach of the sled is about 23 inches to the blade. Otherwise it's pretty wobbly out here and you really want it somewhat on the table. I mean, maybe I could tune that a little bit. I'm not sure. Maybe there's a way to fine tune that sled, but it just seems like, well, it would work better if it had some support out here too. So I'm gonna not use that for these two foot wide pieces. I think it just doesn't make sense. I should be able to use the ripping fence and make faster work of these. So instead of setting up the table saw again, I'm gonna shift gears to these uh, really long pieces. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four. Um, looks like there's a total of four of those. That's probably where the sled I think is gonna be the most useful because everything else is fairly short. We should be able to use the rip fence for a lot of that stuff once we get it set up. So let's focus on these guys instead. There's a 12 inch board in there. Oh yeah, see, so that sled is way onto the table by 12 inches, so lots. Oh, that's not good. What happened there? Looks like the little keep comes out. Well, I guess you wouldn't really need to go past there, would you? Because that would be the end of the board, so. So don't go past there, <laughs> the answer. All right, so we're gonna cut 74, 74, 113, and 113. I think the worst part of this whole thing is I'm scared to death that somewhere in there I made a mistake on my math or something. I had a couple of moments where I'm like, uh, that makes no sense. But when I went back to my spreadsheet, I was like, oh, it kind of does make sense actually. So supposedly that is all of the boxes for the cabinets that go over there. I actually kind of got into a rhythm with the shopsmith. It kind of realized once we got through all the ripping, which went pretty smooth, that basically I could add this table extension down here. And instead of moving the head, which is super annoying because there's two pieces, there's the table and the head, and they move smoothly, but not that great. You know what I mean? But I found that if I move this small piece of table, this table extension in and out, until I'm pretty close, and then I fine tune the fence to get the measurement that I need, I could work pretty quickly from somewheres out here, which was like 30 plus inches, all the way down to this table and then right down to nothing. So that worked pretty good, but moving this table, which is what you're supposed to do over here, and then moving the head and the blade and all that stuff, ah, that sucked. Speaking of suction, I think our vacuum started working a little bit better. I would say there's definitely sawdust there, but there was that much sawdust when we were ripping and uh, I've been cutting for probably over an hour, so it's an improvement. I'm just not sure how much. It doesn't work perfectly. The feather boards were definitely very helpful on the longer sheets when they were sticking out here more. Kind of just played musical tables, and the feather boards definitely helped because those plies wanted to kind of tip up a little bit, so that helped a lot. 
I found that the fence was pretty stinking accurate. I mean, there's a little bit of personality here when you're trying to set it to the blade, so taking my time, that was really important. But once I had it set, it definitely cut very consistently. Um, the blade guard wasn't really a problem, so that was good. I think everything on the Shopsmith really worked pretty well. Guys, I have a confession. It's brutal. I am I just feel stupid. Early on, I told Alyssa, that we needed to run this plywood face down because of how the blade enters the wood so that it would make the cleanest edge possible. And I was totally wrong. You woodworkers out there figured that out immediately. You're like, no, 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 no. And here I am, I've been sawing for probably two to three hours total. And it just dawned on me probably like the 10th to last board. What a stupid mistake. So when you're cutting something like this sheet material and you have a finished face like this, what you want is the blade to enter the finished face. And what it'll do is make a very clean cut along here. But where the blade exits the face, it can tend to get kind of rough. It can even blow out a little bit of the wood. This blade just so happens to cut very cleanly. So we didn't have that problem on this board. I just hope we didn't have that problem on any of these boards. You can kind of see like this little bit of fray right here. It's not much, but if you get that on your finished face, oh, you're crying. Hopefully we got away with sin. These boards are looking pretty good. Oh, it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of blowout right there, just a tiny little bit. And aside from that, we're gonna definitely have to clean these boards because running anything on the face of that saw leaves marks. I guess if, if this were melamine, it'd probably be even worse because that stuff, you can see a film of dust. Well, it looks like we got away with it, guys. Well, there's a little bit right there, a little bit of tear out, not bad. Well, I would have been right if we were using a circular saw because the blade comes up from the bottom where it enters the wood. So you would normally flip this over and, and cut this way. So all your blowout is on the back, but on the table saw, you got it. everything's flipped. Well, I think that's probably gonna do it for today. I wanted to get things cut. I've got quite a bit of leftover. So if we need to recut something or something doesn't line up or whatever, we can make more. I did have to order a new Craig jig. We do have a Craig jig that we bought as part of this um, estate sale, but it's an older style. And I did a little bit of research and we're actually missing some of the pieces. So it's actually preset for three quarter inch material, which this is. So it'll be kind of nice because this one can be set up for three quarter and then maybe the one that's coming, we can set up for half inch, which will be the material that our drawers are made out of or something like that. I'm not really sure. So tomorrow, hopefully we start on the boxes. Yeah.